Hello S3 and welcome to a little bit of Rui revision. This is just going to be an extremely quick video to go over own words, summarising, giving evidence and effective conclusions, just to make sure that you understand them all and that you're prepared for an in-class assessment that we're going to be doing. So as you know, Rui is divided into three main skills. So we've got understanding skills, we've got analysis skills, and we've got evaluation skills, okay? So reading and understanding an unfamiliar piece of writing, usually non-fiction. And then analysis, we've got identifying some different techniques. You've been doing a lot of that in class and explaining why they've been used and what effect they've created. And then lastly, evaluation skills, just thinking about how successfully the writer has used these different techniques that you have identified and analysed. So really quickly, just on to own words. This is one that you should be really, really comfortable with. But we're just thinking about taking information from a text and putting it into our own words. So it's an important one for life in general, a good skill to have, but also really important in RUI assessments and even things like National 5 and higher exams. So remember that when you're answering an own words question, you should be following these steps. So the first one is that you should always be checking how many marks the question is worth, because usually the number of marks is a really good indicator for how many bullet point answers you should have. Then you might find it helpful to highlight answers in the text, just to make sure that you know exactly which parts you're going to be putting into your own words. And once you've got them, remember the most important part is to translate these highlighted sections into something that means the same thing but doesn't use the same words as the text. So you're putting it into your own words. All right, so here's the steps here. Check marks, highlight answers, translate and put them into your own words. Okay, so on to summarising. So again, summarising is a very useful skill for life in general but something that we'll be asked to do in a RUI assessment, so we need to be comfortable with it. When you're summarising, remember that you're only taking the key points from what you've read and then jotting them down in your own words. So you'll already be comfortable with own words, we've just gone over that. But part of the key skill of summarising is that you need to be able to identify what are the most important bits of information to take away from any given text. And just like with any other Rui skill that you've looked at, you need to be aware of the number of marks because that usually tells you how many different bullet points you are looking for. So again, for this, you may find it useful to highlight the key information, then you're translating things into your own words and write your answers in bullet point form. Okay, giving evidence then. So sometimes Rui questions will ask you to find a word or a phrase from the text which shows something in particular. So these can look a little bit like this. It might say, quote the words that. It might say, write down a word or phrase which shows that. Which word shows that? What evidence is there that? Which expression shows that? Okay, all of these things are asking you to quote directly from the text. So you should. Write your answer exactly as it is in the text for giving evidence questions. So remember that you're giving evidence that something has happened. So it's okay and you must quote directly from the passage when you are giving evidence. All right, and lastly, on to effective conclusion. So you might be asked why the ending or the conclusion of a piece of writing is effective. So you can answer these kinds of questions by saying, for example, that the conclusion summarises the writer's main points. Or you could say that it links back to something important that the writer had said earlier on in the text. Or you can also explain that the conclusion is effective because it uses one of the different techniques that we've learned about. So, for example, your similes, metaphors, alliteration, repetition, short sentences, word choice, all of these things that you've learned about in class, you may notice that one of them is in the conclusion and that that is why it's an effective conclusion. Either one is fine. All right, well done everybody. Remember to ask your English teacher if you've got any questions about what we've gone over today, just to make sure that you're prepared for an in-class assessment that you're doing.